Hey guys, Casey Judge, Baseball Rebellion. Uh, in this analysis, I want to go over one of the hitters I've been working with for the past two months. His name is Paxton. Um, he's a switch hitter. We're going to go over his, his left-handed swing because there's been some, some really good changes I've seen in terms of where the speed is in his swing and just overall movement patterns have improved so much. And I specifically wanted to do his swing because he's one of, uh, I train a lot of athletes, a lot of hitters, and he's one of the only kids I see when, when he gets to a lesson early, you know, he, he's always working on stuff we were working on the lesson before, whether it be lower body, upper body. Um, it, it's, it's really cool to see someone, a hitter as young as Paxton, uh, genuinely interested in, in bettering his swing. So I wanted to do this breakdown for him and, and share it with everyone. So on the right, we have his incoming swing. Um, this was about two months ago. And then on the left, we have his new swing. Um, and we'll go into it. They're both synced to contact, so you're going to see you know, how he moves, the shape of his barrel, and all that good stuff. So I would say Paxton's a very athletic, uh, wiry kid. He's not the biggest kid. He's probably about 150, 160 pounds, only a sophomore. But um, what's impressive about Paxton is that you know, now he hits the ball 85 left-handed and 87 right-handed so I mean I, that's really good um, being a, a switch hitter myself when I played you know that, that's really difficult to do usually switch hitters especially that young uh, you know they're a lot better on one side of the play than they are the other but Paxton actually hits the ball identically distance wise according to the hit tracks the same right and left-handed and there's only a two mile an hour difference between his left-handed side and his right-handed side um, some numbers, Paxton came in hitting the ball, left-handed, uh, 80.6 was his max velocity and his max distance was 267. Um, last session we got up to about 324 and uh, 85, so he's added about 5 miles of exit velocity and uh, a good 60 feet in distance and you know consistently hitting the ball harder so you know that's the goal so we'll get into the swings okay stances are pretty similar like I said he, he's more of a, a shift into the back leg and then that lay, leads into his leg lift um, but what, what you'll notice on the left compared to the right is you know his head on the left kind of stays over his back leg and we'll put a circle here where his head is. And we'll put a circle here where his head is on the right. And we'll draw a line to show where it is relative to his body. So the brim of his cap, it's more in the front of his body, more in the center of his body. And this one, he's just more like over his back leg. Um, you know, the forward momentum and this and that, you can get caught up in that and how much you should move forward in the stride. But as long as you're doing it behind your back leg, you know, it's fine. And Paxton actually took out a lot of his forward momentum and learned how to stay in his back leg a lot better. And that's why he gets, which leads to, you know, this shape in the barrel. So he's attacking this ball from more behind. And you could just tell that his barrel's a lot more ready to handle the impact of the ball as opposed to really jamming his hands down in this video towards the ball. This one, you know, he's trying to swing beside the ball from here. He's trying to get in the way of it and then up and through the pitch as opposed to uh, doing what's commonly referred to as the A to C swing. Um, you know, the shortest distance between two points is a line and, and that can't be argued, but it's not the most efficient way in terms of uh, accelerating the barrel head. You want to be able to accelerate it and have it at top speed before contact. So everything that good, everything good that happens in the swing, it, you know, it, it's back here, not out here. I see a lot of hitters, you know, they're really concerned with getting their barrel in front of the ball, out in front of home plate, when realistically, I mean, you want to give yourself this gigantic window of error to make contact with the pitch as opposed to intersecting the ball, I would say, here, and then he's out of the zone. 
kind of there. So the speed is just in a much different spot. And no matter what anybody says, I see a lot of uh, strength-related tweets. And, and this is funny because I'm a, I'm a strength and conditioning specialist along with the hitting instructor. Um, no amount of strength in the world is going to reposition the, the speed in your swing. And Paxton is now getting this shape, this depth to his swing from really working the movements. Um, like I said, he's one of the only kids I have. He shows up to a lesson, only kids I've ever had, shows up to a lesson early, says hi, and then goes and grabs uh, an instrument, whether it be a, a dowel rod or um, this new training product that we got uh, called the follow through bat. And he just gets in the mirror and he starts working on, he starts building upon the lesson before. So um, when you practice good things repetitively, um, over time, you know, it, it's bound to work. And if you're surprised by success, you know, that there's really no validity to what you teach. So uh, I'm super excited for Paxson. I'm really anxious to see uh, him continue to progress. And um, like I said, not surprised at these inherent differences in only two short months. Like I said, he's added five miles an hour base of velocity and uh, about 65 feet of distance, and he's doing it a lot more consistently. So uh, that is my breakdown of Paxton. Keep grinding, dude, and I look forward to working with you more.